So I've dragged our broadcaster over to a different scene. This listener is in our sample scene. It doesn't need to know about the other scene. It doesn't need to know about broadcaster within that scene. All it cares about is this channel, which is living just on the hard drive. So I can hit play and you can see that we're still receiving the events. So a lot of event systems out there use the singleton pattern to manage their, their events. But there are pros and cons to the singleton pattern. If you want to fully explore what the pros and cons are, uh, I've got a link in the description below to some articles about that. The main con for me is that they have to be a, a mono behavior on an object in a scene. And then that that's fine, you know, if you're using a single scene, but if you've got multiple scenes where this singleton has to move between scenes, then every object in that scene then has to get a reference to that object on their sort of on an able function or their on awake or they have to cache the object in some way. Uh, there's a lot of dependency there, like stuff needs to know about other things. And, and the less of that that we can have in our projects, the better the project will be and the more scalable the projects will become as well. So this is where this uh, scriptable object event system uh, sort of wins out over the singleton pattern. So scriptable objects are data containers. They don't live in the scene, they live in the actual project files, uh, but they're not just for containing data. You can actually run methods on them and use Unity events. So because of this, they can be accessed from any scene because they're just on the disk. But that reference will never change between scenes, like its location in your project fi file is the location, unless obviously you move it. And this removes a lot of dependency out of everything. And like I said, the, the less dependent scripts are of knowing about each other, the, the more scalable your project is and just the better that process will be of developing your game. If you want to know more about scriptable objects, uh, Unity have a great video on them. Um, I'll link that in the description too. I first saw this scriptable event kind of workflow uh, on another Unity video. They've got an open game project called Chop Chop, which they're developing with the community, showing off really good uh, coding practices and kind of uh, how you can really get the most out of Unity and all of its systems. But again, there'll be more information on that below. So how does this all work? So it's using something we're gonna call channels. And this kind of scene I've set up just shows a rough estimation of this process. So we've got a broadcaster, which you can imagine is sort of a radio tower. And it's broadcasting something on a radio channel. In this case, for example, on the radio, they're trying to do some home fitness and there's a, a home exercise show that they're broadcasting out. And then this is gonna to go to our channel relay. And then anyone who's listening to that channel on their radio, they'll hear this radio show and they'll get the instruction for this home workout thing to do jumping jacks. So if they're listening, you know, they'll start to do their jumping jacks. Anyone else who's in the room, if they're not really listening to the radio, maybe they're just scrolling on the phone, they don't have to jump. They're not going to do the jump. Only the thing that is actively listening to the radio and participating in this show event, uh, they're going to be the ones who do the jump. So let's just have a look at how this all works. So in our scene, I've got my uh, kind of setup here and I've got a broadcaster, which is our gem on the left here. And I've got a listener. Um, the listener's got a listener script on it, the broadcaster's got a broadcaster script on it, but the red gem doesn't need to know about the left gem. So if we had a singleton pattern, the listener would need to know about the broadcaster, so these two objects would be linked. And then if the listener was a player and they went through a door and went into a different level, the broadcaster would have to come too. But using this method, that's not a thing. We don't have to do that. Um, so I'll have a look at the script for this first. So in our script, uh, which I've just called void event channel uh, SO uh, for scriptable object. Uh, we've got a bit of a summary here. So this class is used for events that have no arguments. Um, we're using Unity Engine and Unity Engine dot events. And so that just lets us have our public Unity action. And we're just going to call it on event raised. We have our create asset menu here. Uh, so menu name equals, and then we've got events void event channel. So that's just so we can right click in the project and create a new channel. Um, so we've got our public class, void event channel, SO, public unity action on event raised. And then we've just got a method called uh, raise event. And we're saying that if our on event raised has some subscribers, so if anyone's listening to that radio station, then just, you know, carry on broadcasting, invoke the event that we want. What we need to do then is if I go over to my scriptable objects folder, I've got my jump event here. Um, because of that create asset menu sort of attribute, I can go to create events, uh, void event, and I could call this the spin uh, event, spin event, the spin event. I could have multiple events, um, and these are all type void, so they don't have any sort of parameters. They're just normal kind of basic, like, hey, I'm doing something, but you're not passing any information along uh, with that. 
So we've got our jump event here. If I go back to our broadcaster script, so in this case, let's just get rid of these. Let's just sleek and out the script. So, so we've just ignored the color one for now. So we've got our void event channel SO, which is our scriptable object script. And I've just called this the jump channel. So here I'm saying if jump channel isn't equal to null, so for example, so we've actually assigned the jump channel in the inspector. And if the space key was pressed, then just raise event. So in our example, this is now the instruction to jump. So anyone who sat at home listening to their radio, they've heard the information to do jumping jacks, so they're gonna jump. And you see that look, there's no singleton patterns, there's no instances, it's just a very simple line of code. Um, jump channel dot raise event. Now if we go over to our listener script, you can see that here we've got a public uh, void event channel SO. And we'll just call that jump channel as well. In our on enable function, I'm just subscribing uh, a, a method here called jump to the on event raised function. And then on disable, I'm just going to uh, unsubscribe from that event as well. And I've got void jump, and then I'm just using do tween to, to do a jump. So just back over to our project here. So now you've seen the code. This is broadcaster. Uh, when I press space, it's going to uh, broadcast to the channel relay, or our radio in this case, and just invoke the event, um, our jump channel event. And then our listener is this gem, and it's just gonna do the jump. So that's our void event channel. Um, but using the exact same code, you can see that I've just copied and pasted this into a new script called color event channel SO. And uh, this is used for events that pass a color. And we've got our create asset menu events. So this is our color event channel. And then we're doing public unity action color on event raised. Um, raise event, and this is gonna take in a color and then it's just gonna invoke it and pass that color on to any listeners. Um, so our unity action, and then in our braces here, we've just saying that we, we need a color. And when we raise this event, like it's expecting a color. So on our broadcaster script, we've got our color event channel scriptable object called color change channel. If that has assigned in the inspector and uh, left control was pressed, then we're just gonna raise the event and we're gonna pass in um, a random color. So then we can jump and we can Press control and get a random color. And this is uh, sort of infinitely scalable. So in our scriptable objects, we could make another one. Uh, so let's make a new C sharp script and we'll call this uh, float event channel SO. And we'll just open up this new script. We've got our float event channel SO. I'm just gonna copy over our void event channel um, code. So this class is used for events that have um, a float argument and this unity action uh, we want to take in a float and then uh, our raise event will take in a float called uh, value and then we're just going to pass that value on and just so we can make this in the inspector uh, get our create asset menu attribute we'll do events and we'll do a float event channel. So let's just go back to uh, Unity. And if we go over to our scriptable objects folder, I can now right click, create event, event, and that's not worked. Oh, not derived from scriptable object. So it's not a mono behavior because it doesn't sit in the scene, it's a scriptable object. So let's just go down. Okay, so back in our project, I'm gonna delete this spin event and then I will create events, float event channel, and I'm gonna call this one the spin event because we're gonna pass in a float and have our gem spin that amount of degrees. So we've got our spin event channel here. If I now go over to our um, broadcaster and I can make a public float event channel and I'll call this the um, spin channel. And then I can say that if our spin channel isn't equal to null and keyboard dot current dot left alt key dot was press this frame so we're going to do our um spin channel dot raise event we see this takes in a value i'm just going to call this um spin amount which will be a public float called spin amount and i'll equal this to uh, 45 degrees at first we can change this in the inspector and we can also, you know, go public color, color change. 
We'll set that inspector as well. So instead of doing a random color, we can uh, pass in our color change. Spin amount. Um, so over in our listener script, we can now have a public uh, float event channel. Call this our spin channel. And I'm actually going to get rid of the jump channel. So we've changed station. We're not listening to the uh, jumping jack show. We're going to be listening to the spin show. We've got a void jump. That's not going to do anything. So void uh, spin. This is going to take in a float value. So now we can subscribe to our spin channel on event raised. Pass in our spin. And then we need to make sure we unsubscribe from it as well. Actually, instead of unsubscribing, um, we're going to have a public bool uh, should jump. Set this equal to true by default. And we'll just say if should jump, then we'll subscribe to it. We'll unsubscribe from it. And if we shouldn't jump, then we're not going to do that. For our spin, we can do transform dot rotate uh, transform dot do rotate uh, new vector three and we're just going to rotate around our y axis by the value and it's going to be a spin of 0 0.5 f and we'll do a rotate mode fast beyond 360 so it can spin around itself so if we go back over to unity or add an extra uh, bracket so now on our broadcaster uh, we will pass in our spin event. And actually, the good thing about this is as well, if we go to our broadcaster and we click the radio button next to the spin channel, it's only going to show us the events that can actually plug in there. So we can just choose our spin event. Um, we don't have to navigate through our project to find it. So spin channel, spin event. And I'm saying I'm going to say that this listener should jump. This one shouldn't jump. So all being well, uh, we've now created another sort of event in our uh, scriptable object event system. Oh, because I've commented out the jump event, uh, we lost the reference to said jump event. So we'll just plug that back in. To avoid that, what you could do, um, when you're subscribing to the event in the listener, uh, you, you could put if should jump and uh, jump channel isn't equal to null and you could do that on these as well so make sure they're not null before you try and uh, subscribe to them to avoid those null errors um, but if we hit play now so we can see that um, this left gem is listening to the instruction to jump and this one isn't so if we hit uh, space only this gem will jump and remember none of these know about the broadcaster this broadcaster could be anywhere in the scene it could be this broadcaster could be in uh, any scene. It could be in a different scene, for example. You may have like a two scene structure where you've got like an initialization scene and then you've got uh, this other, where you've got the actual game scene. Um, and all this is doing is telling the data on the hard drive to raise an event. And these are listening to that. So as this one jumps, this one doesn't. But they can both spin. So they'll both spin around. I've obviously got the axes that they were around wrong. You can see that as I press Alt, they both spin. And then I can press uh, Control and they both change color. And just to illustrate the point, um, if I get if I make a new scene, so create um, scene, and I'll just call this uh, initial scene. I'm going to bring this over. It doesn't need a camera or a light. So in our initial scene, I'm going to move the broadcaster to our, our other scene. We've got our two scenes here. We've got our initial scene and our sam sample scene. Now, if this was a singleton, it'd be very hard to get a reference to the object in the other scene. So I've dragged our broadcaster over to a different scene. This listener is in our sample scene. They don't. It doesn't need to know about the other scene. It doesn't need to know about the broadcaster within that scene. All it cares about is this channel, which is living just on the hard drive. If I can hit play and you can see that we're still receiving the events. This really shows the power of this event system using scriptable objects. This just means it's so much more scalable than using a singleton pattern and having your scene full of 
like audio manager, event manager, input manager. For example, we could do this uh, having an input manager. It just lives in the project. It's not cluttering up a scene. Uh, nothing needs to know about it. it just works. I hope this video was useful. If you'd like the project files in the description of this video, uh, they'll be available over on my Patreon, which is in the description below. If, if this video was helpful, I'd really appreciate a like or a comment to say so. And of course, if you could subscribe, that'd be brilliant. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.